uh, the pressures and the the weight you carry on yourself to try to get to that level um, isn't needed because if you just go out there and compete and, and just get better every time you get on the mound or in the field, wherever you're playing, um, ultimately you'll get to where you need to be. What's up, dudes and dudettes? This is Robbie Rowland, the host of The Robbie Rowe Show. Hope you all are having a glorious day, and I uh, just want to say thank you for tuning in. Today's episode is going to be absolutely sensational. I got my buddy, Luke Weaver. Um, we had an excellent podcast, actually. A very good conversation. Um, about an hour and 25 minutes, I believe. Um, we just dove into his journey and his career and some of the things that he uses mindset-wise to, to make him a very successful big league pitcher. So hope you all enjoy the show. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes. You can search for my podcast in the search bar of iTunes, The Robbie Rowe Show. You can also follow me on Instagram at Robbie Rowe 1 2. That's Robbie with a Y. Also, Twitter is at Robbie Rowe underscore 1 2. And also, I'm going to be posting more content to my YouTube page. That is Robbie Rowe 1 2 as well. So, without further ado, let's welcome our guest, Luke Weaver. Luke's a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, made his big league debut in 2016, was drafted in 2014, and Luke has been a friend of mine since we met in 2015. So, let's sit back, enjoy this little podcast, and I appreciate Luke's time again. And um, for those of you who want, you can follow Luke on Instagram at DreamWeaver7. Um, I think his Twitter handle is also the same. So hope you enjoy this podcast. If you haven't already, subscribe to my podcast, The Robbie Rose Show, on iTunes. Thank you all, and let's get it going. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Robbie Rowland on the Robbie Rowe Show. I got a special guest today and Luke Weaver. Luke, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, y'all. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, um, I'll give you ten dollars. <laughs> I'll give you ten dollars if you do the whole podcast in in a different access or well accent every question. <laughs> Well, is, is my access backstage or is it? <laughs> oh, dude. Um, yeah, dude. So, uh, all right. What's going on, dude? Are you, so I'm guessing you're, you're obviously in camp, right? In Jupiter? Yeah, down in Jupiter. Arrived, uh, I think the 7th. So, been here for a few days. Uh, physicals and all that start tomorrow. Report day was today and uh, ready to get rocking and rolling. Dude, so I, I got you. Uh, I got you on the first day of, of of pitchers and catchers, right? Yeah, I guess that's you could say that. Yeah, I totally timed that out perfectly. And um, so you brought the whole family with you this time, right? <laughs> wife and dog. <laughs> yes, uh, my wife is here as well as my beautiful dog. Isn't that supposed to be backwards? Rig. <laughs> oh no oh shoot can you like can you not uh what would you say uh, <laughs> can we edit that either edit it or just not like promote this podcast in the direction of people i know including <laughs> wife <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll try to I'll try to edit that one out, dude. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Luke is a, I guess you would say he's a pitcher. Um, for the St. Louis Cardinals, um, uh, a pretty good buddy of mine. We met in 2015. Um, yeah, dude. So let's go back, dude. So like I said earlier, we're just kind of trying to have a conversation right now, and we're gonna dive into your kind of your whole, your whole journey, dude. So so the point of this is is kind of getting familiar with the individual and then uh just taking kind of uh little nuggets you know from 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 the other person and, and just trying to apply it to to the youth dude so to take me back take me back to high school man and uh and kind of just give me that journey like so what was it I'm I'm assuming you were kind of above everyone else were you were you a pitcher and an athlete as a hitter or or was it just strictly pitching and, and kind of when when did you know that you were going to try to do that at the next level? Well, I'm surprised that uh, 
you said pitcher and then athlete, like you're a pitcher as well. So I would think you would want to call yourself an athlete as well. But that's kind of already you know, known, though. Well, it's you know it's not you know it's it's something that can rub some people the wrong way, including myself. And uh, I like to think I can move my body in an athletic way as as a position player could. But uh, yeah, so going back to the, uh, <laughs> so we'll know, edit that one out as well. Back got a lot of editing. Yeah, to do. The, the 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 backwards hat, um, hair flip in the front days back in high school. So um, last week. <laughs> yeah time to time to move on um, and uh no it was uh i was a shortstop um just really starting through my whole career uh just as a base i guess shouldn't say career i just as a person in life um uh, just growing up being a shortstop and uh um just trying to play different positions but that was the one i liked the best um you kind of get to do a lot there and um and just kind of doing that and just, uh, you know, allowing my uh, athleticism, as we were just talking about, to to get to its peak and uh, being able to swing the bat a little bit. I think that's what I miss the most, um, just being a pitcher now, is uh, all the reps of ground balls and just being able to swing the bat and try to hit dingers. And, <laughs> well, for me, you know, slappers. Yeah. Um, but, uh yeah don't comment uh, <laughs> but anyways <laughs> but anyways no man it was uh it was um uh, a lot of fun being able to do both uh, typically i would just kind of play short stuff the whole game and come in to like close it out like in the seventh or stuff like that or just uh you know hit as well as start in that game uh just like a lot of us do i mean i'm sure you're right. the same way uh you know i didn't play basketball or anything but uh yeah, me neither <laughs> shout out uh, shout but, out. Uh, just kind of just going into that those are the good old days and uh i think it, it was about my uh, uh senior year um and i got offered to go to florida state it became like okay i'm gonna just be a pitcher so uh, i know for me and my dad that was a tough tough pill to swallow because of all the time we put into hitting and, and ground sure. balls and stuff and he was more of a the position the position guy he didn't know a whole lot about pitching he just kind of learned along the way so even till this day um he's got some stuff to say about you know my uh limited amount of the bats that i'll get <laughs> and uh more to say about that than he does about pitching um, <laughs> which is funny but i can always use the advice in the box dude so um so yeah, dude. Like like going going back to that. So you said obviously shortstop, and I, and I and I can attest to this too, dude. Like playing the field was was just fun, you know. Like you were you were just you were in it, bro. Like best. yeah, like every play, bro. You were like in it, and and I understand that like, you're like that as a starter too. But it was just something different um, about like being an athlete and, and hitting. But um, so was there any ever talk and and I know and I know you, dude. Obviously, like we spent a lot of time together, and and we give a lot we give we give each other a lot of crap about hitting and stuff, but you are actually a pretty, pretty good hitter, dude. And like you have, you have the confidence to be a hitter. So like, was there any ever talk about the possibility of being like a two way guy at Florida state or, or were, was it always just, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'll just stick to pitching. Like that's something that separates me and, and we'll move on. No. Yeah, no, there was actually there, uh, you know, kind of figuring out like the different colleges that were interested and in, just trying to be seen. Um, just by different colleges, um, that was the goal was to, to be a two way player to be able to play oh, wow. um, some infield and uh, hopefully shortstop if, if it could have worked out. But uh, I was actually committed to uh, UCF for a little bit um, and to be a two way guy to play shortstop and pitch and uh, my junior year in high school and as well as I was recruited by Florida to do the same. Um, but that decision to go to UCF over Florida just kind of came. Um, with just, uh, I think, being able to jump in there and, and being, being a guy right away and right. maybe having to wait a little bit. Um, right. But uh, as, as the year kind of went on and it got to my senior year, Florida State is always it was always the school. My mom went there, and it's just been in our, our family, uh, you know, bloodline to start cheering of uh, a college team. I think everybody's got their own, but that was always ours. And, and so when that opportunity came, it – I had to pick, like, do I want to just be a pitcher and then go to, like, my dream college, or do I want to do both and, you know, 
go to a different one. So it came down to sucking up that I did, I couldn't hit and play the field anymore. <laughs> and maybe there was a chance they would like see me, you know, playing catch over with the pitchers and just be like <laughs> quick snap of the ball out of my glove and just like 360 spin moves like between the leg. Like, yeah. Just showcasing myself. Because those are common. Practices yeah. The, yeah. Like that's, that's like an everyday thing for you. You know, like that's, oh, how, you, that's sure. how you throw. This year, yeah. This year I got a, uh, this year I got an infield glove. So you get, you know, of course I you got did. two gloves I get and uh, a pitcher's glove that, you know, standard 12 inches. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I need a, I need like a red H web, like eleven and a fourth. I need to be able to work in my hands when I'm playing catch, yeah. and uh, and just yeah. and just feel good and just kind of like do a couple backhands and uh, maybe jump throws if I'm really feeling good today. Yeah, that's day. that's it's all about really feeling good. froggy though. Those don't. That's not like a, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing. Like that's that's like a rarity though. Um. Oh, you know, that's a weekend thing for sure. <laughs> Dude, so um yeah, man, so like so 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 segueing into that particular like subject about being athletic, you were actually you you won a gold glove, right, in college? Yeah, my last year, my junior season, um I won a gold glove for uh for the pitchers, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's enough. And, uh, uh we won't we actually won't talk about that at all. Um We'll oh, I would love to. I would love to keep talking. Yeah, about so that. like we'll um, bypass that. Yeah, and, so uh, we'll... just. <laughs> uh, well, all I'll all I'll say about that is that that was one of maybe one if if not my favorite thing I've ever received as an award. Like just out of anything you've ever received in life, I think that for me was one of the top awards. That that just uh, that meant a lot to me just from all those days uh, growing up playing that position and and keeping that you know that prideful oh um, yeah dude you know that prideful thought of like you know what I don't ever want that to leave me I want to be you know the the best if I can't play shortstop then I want to be the best fielding pitcher um, around so that that award meant a lot well yeah and 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 and, and like for people to take notice of that too. In, in an award like format, like that's huge, dude. Like in all in all seriousness, like that's uh that's that's quite the accomplishment. And and luckily we only spent about a minute and a half talking about that. We'll we'll definitely move on now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, dude. So so obviously it's a tough decision, dude. And, and it sounds like you had a tough decision too, just based on um, not just what school you wanted to go to, but kind of what avenue you wanted to approach as well. Um, but you picked uh, Florida State. You were a null. Um, and uh so go <laughs> um so freshman year bro so you go in and 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 did they kind of did they kind of say like hey you know you'll come in dude and 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 make an impact right away is that is that something that kind of separated that school from any in particular other school just knowing that you could come in freshman year and kind of and make a difference uh i would say yes and no i think the opportunity was there um but we had we had a couple of other um, freshmen coming in that were pretty good. Um, some some veteran guys, you know, juniors and seniors that uh, kind of just been around and, and had some innings under the belt and whatnot. But uh, you know, I was set out to try to you know they call them uh, you know weekends so Friday, Saturday, Sunday typically are the games, and so like Friday night starter, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. So like everybody wants to be the Friday night guy. That's just what they would call the ace for right. the most part. Right. Um, and so I just wanted to be in the weekend rotation, just this either a Sunday, Saturday. I mean, it didn't matter. Um, and I felt like um, I felt like I was close, and if not earned it, but um, I was rewarded the Tuesday starter, which is you know, they call midweek starter. And um, club goes up on a Tuesday, dude. <laughs> Yeah, depending on who you ask, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was a step back, you know. It was still an honor to be a starter, still like right. just you know move to the bullpen real quick and something I had never done. But uh, also, it was kind of a step back because you know I felt like I could pitch in the weekend, but it was right. just um, a time where I had to you know face it and just get after it and go and. Uh, you know, going into that, that first start I had, I ended up going like 
two and a third and gave up like six home run or six uh six home runs. Wow. Six <laughs> runs and was, like, one of them was a, was a grand slam. And uh and so it really just kinda knocked me off and like it really just humbled me. Um and that whole season, this first like two to three starts were kinda like that and uh right. it was just a a great way for me to hit that adversity after, you know, you know, coming out of high school a lot of a lot of guys just you know, dominate or just have that confidence and it, and you go into the college and you kind of get pushed back on your heels a little bit and you got to kind of re, uh, redirect yourself and, and figure out, you know, what's going on. Yeah, and dude. Get better. I think, yeah, like that's such a, that's such a pivotal thing that like not a lot of people talk about, dude, is everyone obviously wants to be successful in all they do. Right. And, and obviously the best of the best are, are highly successful a lot of their times in their career, but no one really talks about like the failure. And, um, my buddy who I just had on my last podcast, dude, like we kind of touched on the same thing is, is where same for me, bro, when I was coming out of high school and, and same for you is where we just constantly like we're succeeding and we're succeeding. And then, and then all of a sudden, like we hit this patch where like, we're not just the, you know, the big fish in the little pond anymore, bro. Like we're, we're in it. Um, so if you can do just real quick, like touch on some of the things that kind of helped you through that time of, of, I don't know if it was self doubt, but it was definitely like, okay, well I'm not, you know, I'm not the best of the best anymore. Like there's obviously more that goes into it. So like, just kind of touch on that mindset and some of the things that, you know, that helped you kind of going through that certain time. Yeah. So I think in that moment, um, you know, there's two ways you can, you can really go like you can either get angry and channel that anger and just go out there and just say, look, I'm tired of being bad and I'm going to start proving people wrong and really just prove to myself that I'm, you know, I can go do it. Or you're just going to feel sorry for yourself and uh, just kind of be back and uh, go back on the back burner there and just kind of right. salt in, in your own emotions. And so um, I've always been a guy who like, and then growing up, I think my dad established this, but like he would always get me angry just anytime we'd go out and do stuff like, you know, just working hard and getting after it and uh, maybe not succeeding with different things. And and him just, you know, always getting me angry, knowing like at the end of the day, I'm always going to get so angry that I channel that and I'm able to, you know, put that into my play in a positive way. And that's just kind of been like the um the golden rule for me when i play baseball now it's like you know in those times where you give up those home runs or those game winning hits or such like that failure yeah being able to channel that anger and for me and and put that back onto the mound and you know whether it's throwing as hard as you can um you know sometimes that doesn't work (laughs) but uh (laughs) I think Write that down. you do it in the right way where you're able to control where you're able to control your, your body and do all those things and with repetition. Um, it's just become a thing now where like I try to get myself angry before the game even starts, which is hard to do. Um, unless someone punches you in the face or slaps you or whatever whatever. Yeah, it's a common know. pregame but, ritual uh, right there, I would say. <laughs> it, yeah, for the most part. But that's just kinda how how it went and uh so I kind of uh, a switch you know, clicked and uh, started to hit a stretch there where I was throwing well and you know stats you can just sort it out the window because the, all those all those outings where it just kind of ballooned everything it just became more about like okay what kind of stretches can I put together what kind of streaks can I go out there and show them and it was really just kind of contributing to the team and uh, that last year or excuse me that uh. That season, we went to the College World Series. And, yeah, you went uh, to the College World Series freshman I, year, right? Correct. That was that year. So, like, I was – it started off from really struggling and just kind of transitioning into, like, okay, you know, got to turn it around. And then becoming, like, you know, a piece to the bullpen uh, when it came down to the College World Series and then being able to, like, okay – what can I do for the team on the biggest stage really of my career at the time? Right, right. And I had to, I had to come in um, in the elimination game um, against Arizona. And uh, in like the first inning, our starter wasn't able to get through the, get through the first inning with some um, unfortunate things, but I just had to hold it down for like three innings and, you know, it did, did solid, you know, it wasn't perfect, but, it just all came back to that moment of like, okay, what can I learn from the season to get to this point? 
Yeah, I think that's huge, bro. Um, and it's funny for those who, for those of listening who who watch Luke during the season and uh, and wonder why he kind of always looks really pissed off. This is this is that reasoning. He's actually <laughs> he's actually a really like happy, like joyful guy. So he's he's not like that in in real life. But um, yeah, dude. Everyone everyone has those things. It's funny, dude, because because I'm like the opposite. Whereas like when I take baseball and pitching like super seriously is when I kind of get too stressed out and I start putting emphasis too much on, on certain pitches and I, I lose track of who I am and what For makes sure. me successful. And, and it's funny, it's taken me like eight years to figure out like, okay, dude, just, just go have fun with it. And that, that'll probably bring out the best in me. It's funny how everyone kind of has their different, different things, you know? And, um, I think that's huge, but Hey, I want to give you an opportunity right now to redeem yourself from that, from that, uh, the wife comment earlier. So, um, talk about, <laughs> So you met Olivia in uh, your freshman year, right? Yeah, I met her freshman year, and um, so I mean, I'll just go on with this. Yeah, so, yeah. obviously, I met her want you redeemed. Year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, met her freshman year. Um, her brother played on the team at Florida State. Happy um, birthday, Gage! A... Yeah, happy birthday to Gage, uh, <laughs> Gage Smith. But uh... <laughs> subtle plug. But, uh, anyways, uh, met met her then. Met her then, and uh, he was on the team. Was a, a grade uh, or two above me. Um, I don't remember, but uh, so, anyways, we became friends. You know, I'd go hang out over with Gage with some guys, and like, you know, she would come over and hang out because she was friends with his girlfriend at the time and whatnot. And so, it, she got to know each other, and uh, it became a thing where like the teammates started wanting me to like be the guy to date her, and just thought like we could go well together and et cetera. And, um, <laughs> and I just continue, I just continue. It was like, you know, this isn't a great idea. And, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure like his approval, um, you know, I have his approval. Meant a lot to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do that to a teammate. Especially, right. Especially coming in like early as a younger guy, you just, you want to respect him as a human being, but right. I think it got to a point where he just got so fed up with everybody just in his ear about it, blah, 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 that he just came up to me one day and was like, Hey Luke, if you want to, uh, um, if you want to date my sister, you know you can. Uh, you're probably the only guy ever that I would let do that, like on a baseball team I've ever played on, or something <laughs> like that. And uh, was uh, really really cool about it. And uh, and I was like, well, I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. And it's probably the most regretful day of his life because, um, <laughs> went, on, went on to marry her and just annoy, annoying them for years. Yeah, dude. So you can, you can honestly say like you had no regrets on, on the, the particular college that you went to. <laughs> no, dude. And that's, and that's just the, the thing. Like, Nothing to do with baseball. All those like, choices. <laughs> yeah. All those choices and everything. It all came down to the wonder woman. Oh man. Um, I'm hope I'm hoping she's right there listening in, dude. Those are huge brownie points, but, um, but, uh, dude, I might just, I might change my like podcast into like just straight love stories, dude. Cause that, that got me fired up. Appreciate you, uh, t- touching on that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dude. So, so, uh, obviously your, your freshman year, I would say is, uh, kind of put you on the map, dude. And you gained like a lot of experience, um, I mean, dude, pitching in the College World Series, man, that's crazy. It's funny. I had Paco Rodriguez on my last one, and, and uh, he went to the College World Series yeah. all three years, bro. And it was like, oh, my gosh, man, you don't realize how, like, how crazy that is. Um, and he was kind of giving me no, some absolutely. some of the, the you know, experiences. And, and I just can't imagine um, being 19 and kind of being exposed to all that. If you can, dude, like, kind of sum up um, – what was the biggest thing you kind of took away from from that experience? This is 2012, right? Your your freshman year. 2012. Yeah. Yeah. So take uh, 2012. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So just take us into that, like being, um, just being 19, bro. Like going into that, and and obviously there's a there's a crap ton of people there, and it's a high stake game. Like what is what is that like, bro? Like, what what is going through your mind at that time, being a freshman and, and coming in in the first inning in a freaking huge game? Like, what a what do you tell yourself? Well, I mean, it's it was more exciting than anything. It just became like, you know, this is what 
you know, besides like the actual World Series, like this is kind of what you're dreaming of as you just come up through different levels. So, you know, you're, you're getting into college and it's like, man, this is college of the series. Like you just dream of going there. You're always watching on TV. Right, um, right. You know, the final, the final eight teams and you're just so into it. And you're just like, man, I wonder what that's like. And the experience of that first year was um, definitely a whirlwind. And uh, we had such a good team. Um, we actually played Stanford um, in the Super Regionals, who had Capel, who was, you know, the first overall pick and was just – Dude, he just unreal. retired. Yeah. I That's mean, crazy. Great guy. I, I've talked to him a little bit. And, yeah, uh, he's awesome. NorCal you know, kid. Most of them strong, are. Strong, strong in his faith and all that. Yeah, great guy. And uh, – and he was just, you know, at that time, he was the best pitcher around. And right. So it was super intimidating. And they also had Biscotti, Stephen Biscotti, who was just with us for all the just um, yeah. He was playing third and uh, a couple other guys. And um, Danny DeKroger was on that team. Um, <laughs> Double DZ. But, uh, yeah, but that <laughs> – but just uh, really just getting through that team and, and being able to put up some a lot of runs against them and, and beating them was just like in the first step into the College Road Series because that was such a huge accomplishment, beating like Appel and, and those right. guys and just kind of going off of that confidence into the College Road Series. So there was just a lot of um, excitement and, and confidence. And uh, it's really just uh, like going to a – I don't know, like an amusement park or something. Like there's, there's always something going on, and you're always just happy, and you just want more. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, the great way to put it, people in in Omaha, and people in Omaha are just the nicest people ever, and they just live for that that time of the year. Um, they really are you know, every single year, and that's just their thing. That's right. just their thing, and and they're known for it. And so, just you add in so many different factors, and it just makes one of the greatest. You know tournaments or series um around um were you were you at the old park or the new one i i, I don't i don't know when the the new one the was, new one it yeah. was the new one so okay. i have a i actually have a record there you want to hear my record longest hair ever <laughs> no, i didn't have the hair at that point uh, um sorry. it was actually the first person to give up two home runs in the same inning at the new ballpark Dude, so you know what's funny is like I'm sitting Man. here, I'm like, yeah, you, you know, like successful yeah. like time, you know, for you, and then you drop that on us. So yeah, so that's uh, a <laughs> that's a that's quite a record, to have, right? Man. You know, you got you know you got to humble yourself at times. You got to look back at the at the bad and the good times and know that you've become better from your bad ones. Yeah, it's all about learning from past failures, man. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm all about that, but uh. Yeah, dude. So, um, just real quick, bro. Like, uh, obviously, you guys didn't win at all, right? No, we haven't. Wits, there's a streak going. Uh, um, I think we've been 22, maybe 23 times, and have yet to win it. And uh, it's super unfortunate because there's such rich, rich tradition at Florida State. With right. I think they're at 40 plus consecutive 40 win seasons, which no one's even close to that. Right, that's as far unreal, as man. Second place, and uh, and uh, and you know, it's just. I guess I don't know how to explain it. You know, you you go every year, or the teams do, and you just expect, okay, this is going to be the this is going to be it, and it just doesn't happen, and it just shows how hard it is to win a championship, no matter at what level it is. Oh, dude, absolutely, man, and, and just so much more goes into it, man, and it's just. I mean, we could talk all day about that particular subject, but but moving on. Um, so, dude, take us into uh, you know, for lack of a better term, kind of becoming a guy uh, at Florida State, dude, and, and becoming like that that guy everyone counted on to get you guys a win. Um, I want just from our conversations. I want to say it was your, it was that next year, right? Your sophomore year, you kind of took on that ace role and and you flourished and, and it kind of just you know all all went up from there, right? Yeah, it did. Um, I actually started that next season. Um, you know, kind of the same position where like, okay, I'm gonna try to win a weekend uh, rotation spot, and I ended up getting the Tuesday job again, and that just <laughs> that fired me up even more than the right. first time just because you know but you know it's it is it was what it was um 
and I, I don't think I actually showed them that I deserved it just with the season. Like, it was more of just like, you know, Weaver is showing improvement, but like, is he a guy that we want in that rotation to count on? Right. And so um, it, it just became, okay, it was that moment where like, am I going to push forward or backwards? And I was just like, you know what? I don't even care. I'm going to go out there, have fun. Like you were talking about, right. um, just have a good spirit, just go do what I do. And, um, and really just try to just try to have fun. And, uh, so the first like five, I think I had five starts or something like that. And I was just, uh, I think I was on like a consecutive scoreless streak or something and was not really walking many people and I was striking out a good amount of people and like a lot of things going well and I think it just really came from that mindset and uh it got to a point where we're about to go play Miami University of Miami uh the U down south and uh, the U and uh I'll never forget like that day where instead of putting me into the rotation they put me straight into the Friday spot and, oh wow! Uh, it, it was kind of a shock, and it kind of took me by surprise a little bit, just because you know I was like, oh, I wasn't really expecting to be moved. Like I was just kind of like in that zone where like you know just give me the ball on Tuesday and I got this. Right. But they put me in the Friday spot, and I was a little taken off, and I was like, kind of click like, you know what, you got this, you can handle this. Like it's at Miami. Like it was a it was a you know, a tough first game in that yeah, spot with the yeah. pressure and what everything. But uh, I think I went out and I went like five or six and, you know, one or two runs and pitched solid. I think we got the win. And then from there, just the confidence build uh, was built and I just continued. And it just ended up being probably one of the best seasons, if not the best I've ever had in my entire, you know, pitching career. Um, just as a pitcher in general, just the way I felt every time, um, the way the ball was coming out, just the statistics I was putting up was um, some that, you know, I look back like that year. I look back now and like if I'm ever struggling whenever I try to kind of get mechanics or information like video of some sort from that year because right, I, right. like it was all clicking that year. If that makes sense. Yeah, dude. So like um, so let's let's dive into that, dude. Like as a as a starting pitcher, like. You know, a lot of people don't recognize like how how big that is, and and it's funny. We go through spurts all the time in our baseball career, where we're kind of just in that state of 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 just constant success, dude, and and we don't ever really dive into like the why that's happening. You know, you kind of just go out every fifth day or, or seven days, exactly. whatever it was in college, and you're and you're just succeeding, dude. And you know, and you don't really dive into like, okay, well, what am I doing now? Say, as if what was I doing last year? So, what was it? What do you think it was for you, dude, that, that allowed you to go out, you know, every Friday night and just get in another state of mind and, and just dominate? I think as soon as I felt like maybe maybe before that start was a little skeptical, but as soon as that start was over and just kind of like got my feet wet in that role and just kind of took the, the pressure off and just could relax, then it just became like game on. And uh, everything was clicking just mechanically where, like, there wasn't any type of struggle with the mindset or anything. And it was just really about um, getting over that teeny little hump of, like, okay, this is the new role. Like, it's time to, to be that leader on that Friday night and be the guy they can count on. And uh, I rode the wave, man. Like, just yeah. like every outing, it didn't think about anything except going out there and um, – I mean, I really don't even remember even having thoughts like, you know, what am I going to do to this hitter or that hitter? It was just like I knew what I needed to do to warm up, and I knew what I needed to do to, to get onto the mound um, when the game started. And from there, it was um, it was just time to go. Um, and I think there's something to be said for just simplifying, simplifying the game um, right. in a way where – you know, you can just take away all those pressures and just the whole mechanical aspect and, and just go out there and just play the game. You know, it's a game, and that's that's just really what it is. Yeah, dude, I think it's funny because obviously you know me, bro, and, and there's sometimes I fall into that quicksand trap of overcomplicating everything, and it, and it's funny how we, we break it down to the – 
to the minutest, I don't know if that's a word, but minute detail of, 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 thro- <laughs> of, of throwing a baseball when in reality, it's like, it's something <laughs> we've been doing our whole lives, you know? And, and it's funny. I, I wrote a, I wrote a blog post, I think like last week, dude, about kind of, of big situations, you know, kind of like a situation you were in freshman year where there's obviously high stakes at it. And, and sometimes uh, individuals will go through a process where like the game will change on them when in reality it, it doesn't, you know, it's the same thing. It's a, you're throwing a ball, you're throwing, yeah. you're throwing it 60 feet, six inches to a, to a target, you know, that, that never changes. Um, but it's just, it's, it's one of those things like you get in that, that flow state of mind, bro, where you just, you're doing something that's so simple and, and you're doing it at a high level and it's, uh, it's crazy, but, but moving on to that, this is, this is kind of that year, bro, where you kind of separate yourself from the rest of the pack. And, you know, I, I know from just kind of following, following that, that, that year, you, you had like stupid numbers and obviously, um, with that comes, you know, the speculation of, of where you're going to go in the draft. Obviously, at that point in time, you had a whole nother year to play. Um, so so kind of how do you deal with that like speculation and, and kind of controlling, you know, the, the external forces at that given time of like, oh, you know, Weaver's, you know, maybe first overall pick in next year's draft. But, you know, at the same time, having a whole nother year to go like, you know, kind of what, take me through that process of, of how that was like, obviously with the way the media is and you hearing your name a lot, um, and going into your junior year, obviously going as a, as the Friday night guy, big dog on campus, kind of take us through that, uh, process heading into that year. So that, that sophomore season was, it, it was almost easy in a way where no one really knew who I was. So I could just go out there and pitch, even though, you know, success was coming and, and numbers were good um it still wasn't I was still wasn't like a top prospect as far as anybody's radars and so like it just made it easier to go out there and and you know not have any of the sure. hype as sure. some of these guys had and uh and so being able to uh, to do that just made pitching easier for me but transitioning to after that and being able to play summer ball um did you go to the and cape Nate and so I went to the Cape my fresh after my freshman year. Um, okay, coaches like and I, I pre- and that was a lot of fun. And I appreciated the fact that they felt like I could compete there, uh, especially just kind of after like statistically that first year. I think they felt like the stuff and everything could translate there, which it ended up being a good summer and uh, um, you know learned a lot and was able to, to to compete. But that next season after the sophomore season, I was. Uh, invited to play with the USA collegiate team, which, um, you know, for the collegiate level, like to me, that's the highest honor you can be rewarded. Oh, playing absolutely. With, you know, the best, the best of the best in the collegiate level. I'd say on that, you know, I would count my head, but I would say there's, there was minimum 10 guys in that team that are, legit big league starters in the like right now right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and just i'll name a couple like kyle schwarber uh, trey turner alex bregman michael conforto um brandon finnegan i mean it the list goes on yeah i haven't it's heard really any of crazy those guys. uh yeah. bradley zimmer yeah i'm, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> but uh but uh so just kind of going into that junior season um after that after all kind of that hype with that team, that's kind of when it started to sit in. It was like, okay, big year. And this thoughts start creeping in of like draft draft year and, and really just trying to minimize and quiet that noise as much as I could. Um, and it just became hard because now I was on a radar where like people were looking at me and like expectations I'm on draft boards and this and that. And yeah, expectations and, and dra- mock drafts come out and different things and you can't help, but just like, you know, go on the internet and look and just hope to see your name on there. And when yeah. you don't, then it kind of eats at you. And when you do, it just makes things worse because then it's like, you know, I could be higher. I could, I could, you know, be up the list even more. And There's no good like that, that really so, comes uh, from it. <laughs> no. There, and you know that anytime you, you look into social media as far as success and just, you know, trials and of some sorts, like you never get anything good out of it. Right. And, um, and so just heading into that season, a lot more pressure I put on myself. And, and you know, I just expected big things. But kind of going into the year and, and things are going solid. And uh, 
Uh, I think I was um, the golden, like a golden spikes, like preseason watch list, like just different things like that, which didn't think I had any shot of winning that. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, of course, the hair, the Grom style and, uh, and was just feeling good, feeling good about things. And, I love uh, how you just added that I in just, there. I just slipped it in, baby. I love that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh so really just getting into that season uh just to kind of paraphrase it is uh with the expectations and all and then all of a sudden like I felt like my velo I wasn't throwing as hard where like my sophomore season through the hardest I ever thrown I think I got like you know mid 90s or so and touched a tick higher but was just sitting around there and ball was jumping and then when I got to this year I felt like I couldn't break glass like I just dropped like 5 miles an hour and my arm just like felt weird and this was it was tough to pitch and uh and so that just I felt like that started to hurt me you know when you when it comes to the draft they look at projectability they look at like velo and and this and that and like when something big like that started to drop it started to eat at me even more and uh long story short just that whole year was kind of up and down uh, it ended up being a solid year statistically but um as that year started to wind down I almost felt like I was going out there to throw as hard as I can I was obviously trying to win but the emphasis was throw as hard as I can so I could show them I had velo because I couldn't just naturally have that velo I used to have the year ago and so um it just became about how hard can I throw this fastball every single pitch and and uh and that just was tough and I just started to slide back on draft boards and just start kind of almost exiting out of that first round area and uh luckily just kind of like towards the end there I was just like you know I just need a pitch I need to go out there and try to win and just you know showcase what I have and and luckily that kept me still in that round um dude there's a there's a lot to be said about that and that's something that you know obviously maybe we can dive into another time but um that whole process of the draft because I mean obviously like uh going through that is is you're on a team right it was a little bit different for me because I was in high school so you know, no offense to any high school program, but maybe the emphasis isn't so much on winning at that particular time. It's about, you know, how high can I go in the draft? So like you said, like throwing hard, obviously that's a, a big thing, you know, that they want to see. But for you, dude, being a being a Friday guy in college, you're kind of facing, you know, two sides of that coin where you're trying to go out every Friday and, and, and win a series, you know, start the series off right and win games. But at the same time, as you know what you have to do to give yourself like the best shot at, at at getting drafted as high as possible. So was that, I mean, obviously you kind of just touched on it, you know, getting back to that, that position of, you know, kind of screw it. Like, I'm just going to, you know, let that worry about itself and just go out and win games. Is that something that kind of just, you got to a point where that really just helped you kind of get back into that rhythm of looking back at what, what made you successful that year before and, and just trying to get that, that freaking dog out of the cage and, and try to win games rather than, caring about the draft that's exactly what it had to be um there's just no way of going out there and uh and doing what i was doing with you know just the whole thought process of all that outside noise and all those pressures that were um that were coming on me and um and so did you get a call on the other line became (laughs) all right what yeah i got a call on the other line Uh uh-oh you want to edit this out (laughs) <laughs> no it's fine it's freaking it's real man real life <laughs> all right well we'll talk through it but uh <laughs> anyways uh just be- external just became, forces just, man really just became- <laughs> all right it's gone we're good right. um no it just uh it, it didn't ever really leave but uh it just became you know i gotta pick one or the other and i gotta pick the one that is going to get me through instead of to see me alive. And so, yeah. um, you know, season ended, it, it ended, we ended on a really bad note. We ended up, you know, in our regional, um, in Tallahassee, we, we lost the first two games. So, you know, oh. you, it's a uh, four teams and we played the four seed and their pitcher, um, just through the, you know, a, an amazing game against us. You remember who it was? Runs, and so we lost to them. Uh, I believe it was, it was Georgia Southern, but uh, Josh Worsu was on that team. I was going to say, is that Worsu's team? 
That's awesome. Yeah, that was Worcester's team. He didn't he didn't pitch that game. Apparently, he wanted to pitch that game, but um, I think he pitched the next game. Um, That's when he heard you grunting in the outfield. A, I think I believe. It. Yeah, he makes up that I grunt. I, only you grunt. I don't grunt. I don't need. Oh, grunt. hey, I, I forgot but, to tell uh, you, I don't grunt anymore. I'm a big like exhale guy now. So am I gonna hear like? the winds of the ocean coming across the field and just like smelling your breath. That's a hard to read. Did you just quote a poem? Cause that sounded flawless. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, are we getting off track or what dude? Like, <laughs> what? yeah, you started it. Um, but anyways, we, yeah. we started, we, we ended the season, uh, going Owen two. we lost to uh, the, the, I believe it was the four seed and then the three seed, if not the two seed. But either way, we went zero and two, and it just like ended like that. And it was like, yeah, college career is over. Like you know. I so did you know, like you were going? Drafted. Sorry, sorry to yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. Did you know, like, uh, kind of that whole year, like, okay, this is, you know, it, it, this is something that I wanna, I wanna do if 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 obviously the opportunity is right. Like, or did you know, like, right off the bat, or kind of take me through that process? As far as getting drafted, yeah, it's like because you said like your college career was over after your junior year. Obviously, having one more year, but, yeah, you know, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was I was locked in um, on trying to be drafted because uh, um, I just I felt like I was ready. And though it ended so quickly, um, as far as being knocked out when we did, um, at the end of the day, that couldn't really sway my decision you know um you know a couple days go by and it just becomes you know you enjoy those memories and everything and those will never leave you but it's just time for the next step uh, or chapter in your life and uh you know the upcoming drafts you know come in at that point and uh really at that point just trying to stay out of all the, the words being said this and that and just do my best job put my foot forward and uh and it's, you know, it wasn't easy, but it just became one of those things. And, and anybody that's been through that process, as you have, it just becomes something where you're super overwhelming. And it, it's, you know, the next step in your life. And it's, you know, it's your life. And that's that's a lot to take in in that moment. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's like, it's funny because it's something that obviously you set your sights on, right? Like as a, as an individual or as an athlete growing up, you obviously kind of have these, these different goals. And, uh, I would say one of them being, if you do take the route of going to college is the college world series, right. And, and you hit that. And then yeah. that next one obviously is the draft. Like you want to, you want to get drafted. You want to get that opportunity to play professional baseball. And, and, uh, and then now you're, you obviously hit that dude. So bro, just, just talk about, obviously you went, you know, you, this is 2014 draft. You go, you go first round. Um, I know obviously you get this question a lot, man, but if you can just, just summarize, dude, like kind of that mindset, dude, when you, when you hear your name and and you hear the pick, um, you know, what, what are those first thoughts that come, come to your mind when, when the Cardinals call you, or I don't know if they called you or not, but when they picked you. Um, yeah. So just, as names are names are being picked and um i think in the back of your mind you're like is someone gonna mess up and you know <laughs> draft me first overall or <laughs> or do something <laughs> do something out of the ordinary you know it's always at risk and uh none of that happened obviously but uh dang it it just became you know <laughs> well you talk to you know agent at the time people you're working you know know the inside stuff and uh and you kind of get an area and the area was like area in the draft and the area was kind of towards the back end and, uh, back end of the first round at that point. Um, yeah, back into the first round. And just for me, it was just trying to, to not, uh, fall out of that. Just trying to, you know, if I was going to make it, just try to make it into the back end. And, uh, you know, from the, after the sophomore season to that, to that point, you know, it just became acceptance, you know, realizing that life is what it is and you just had to, you know, go along with it. And, and though there's times where you might be at this position or that position and you get knocked down, you just got to learn to deal with it and uh, make the best of it. So at that point, I was just, you know, extremely excited to, to be in that area. And so 
uh, right before my name got called on the TV, um, you know, I get a message on my phone and I look down and it's from, uh, um, you know, one of my agents, you know, the guy who works together with agents, I would say, you know, that whole deal. Right. But, uh, for those who don't, you work with a couple different guys, not just one specific guy sometimes, but with numbers um, and briefcases and I get cell a text phones from him. Yeah, no briefcases, just really good looking, like clothes and, you know, form fitting. Um, <laughs> You're going to like anyways, the way you look, I guarantee it. But, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyways, look down on my phone, see the message, and I just kind of like, I'm like kind of frozen at this point, like a, just a stone seat, and I just kind of move my eyes directly down and I uh, read the message, and it's just like – um said something like let's go or, or in all caps exclamation points or something like that. And at that point, like the Cardinals are on the, on the clock with the 27th pick. And, uh, and so my heart just burst out of my, like, you know, chest, whatever that heart thing's like, in crazy. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the heart's located. And, uh, <laughs> and I just remember it was just, I couldn't move. Like I was just so like locked in and everybody was locked in. I had, um, uh, you know, family there, my family, um, Olivia's family, a couple friends, teammates, and whatnot, and uh, Olivia's my wife, by the way. And uh, we talked about that, I think, right? Well, I'm so watching. <laughs> yeah, I'm just making sure. Okay. And uh, and so I'm so I see that text, and my heart's about to explode, and so they're about to like you know say the pick, and no one knows except really me, and then they say it, and it was just like. You know, I didn't want to believe the text until, like, it was said. Sure. It's one of those things where, like, you can't believe it until it's happened. And uh, so it happened, and it was just, I mean, a moment where all, all those memories, all this timeline we just kind of went through just comes to this one moment, and it's just, like, hits you right in the middle of the face. And the um, only thing that comes out of you is excitement and, and uh, just, uh, your joy, guess, man. on the back end, maybe some relief joy but really just some relief you know like just you just can relax like you all this uptight all this stuff you work so hard for and you put all this pressure on yourself and you're just thankful and just joyful like you said to just to to be that pick and to to be uh, you know picked up by by a team who believes right. in you so yeah uh awesome night and uh you know definitely one i won't forget yeah dude freaking absolutely but hey i want to touch on this and um I think this will be huge for the listeners just to get a sense of your personality if they haven't already. Can you just tell the brief story of your avid bird watching hobby? Yeah, this was happening. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I mean, this is so classic Robbie right now. uh, So, you know. I like to think I like to think I'm gonna have a bird watcher. You know, maybe I don't get out as much as I should and keep a book 24 seven when I go and see birds. But I mean, aren't we all avid bird watchers? Um, but uh, anyways, I'm not gonna get all into that. But uh, uh, when I got drafted, they played a video for Team USA. They did like a little promo video of just like who you were, what you liked, uh, different hobbies. And oh, my hobby, I said I was an avid bird watcher. And, and, uh, you know, something that's cool and fun, but also was different. And, uh, I thought people would enjoy knowing that. And, Bro, uh, I just had to mute my end because I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and so people, uh, people didn't want to talk about me being drafted. They were more interested in the avid bird watching. So I remember talking to some, um, people out in St. Louis, you know, right after I get drafted, I'm talking to some reporters just about the whole draft, blah, blah, blah. And then a couple other people were just like, tell us more about the avid bird watch. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is one of the biggest moments like in my life, like just career wise and everything. And you want to talk about the bird watching. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> and, um, what was so, your, what was your favorite bird? There's a couple, the blue duckbill plat. The, do, the blue <laughs> duck billed platypus hummingbird. Hold on, hold on. There's the, only two. The, in, there's only two in the world. The 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 blue duck bill platypus. Hunting, hummingbird. Pl- pl- platypus hummingbird. Yeah, that's a rare breed. I heard I, they don't make a lot, right? 
Yeah, so it's a uh, a cross bred between a, a duck, a blue duck billed platypus, and a hummingbird. Um, it's crazy what this world, you know, can do. Like the creatures are living on it, but sure. yeah, it's a uh, a cross breed. There are only two in the world. I believe they live. I don't remember where I said they were. I believe out in the Galapagos Islands. Out yeah, there, that sounds about right. Near the equator or wherever those, wherever that's located. But uh, North Pole. But yeah, that was the the one I was searched for. No, they don't live in cold climate. Okay. Um, yeah, man. So shoot, I uh, I really appreciate you diving into that real quick. Dude. That's huge. But um, obviously, there's <laughs> there's a lot a lot left to hit. So, so let's go. Uh, I, I was actually going to breeze through like your minor league career, right? And obviously it's, it was a very short minor league career, you know, um, I think you, you've done well, but I, I wanted to, to, to just really highlight a specific moment in that, in that career, because I think your, your most memorable year would be 2015, right? When, when you met like a certain someone. Well, I when we met. Yeah. Like, that's what I was saying. Like, I, I know you've talked to me in the past about like, off, Hey yeah. Robbie, like my favorite year was, was 15, you know, like when I met you and we got to live together and stuff is that's, I mean, you want to tell our listeners kind of, you know, about that, that specific year, you know, going to the, going to the Arizona fall league together and just, you know, I think I really just brought the best <laughs> out of you, you know, and, and was able to allow you to, to flourish just by knowing me. Right. Well, I, I would like to think it was the opposite, but I think <laughs> what is the opposite to, of that? To our listeners, <laughs> like me impacting you, obviously. But uh, uh, yeah, anyways, there's that. To our listeners, I would say we all have you know different friends who want to hear different things, and just Robbie's a guy who I consistently want to tell, hey, my favorite year was 2015 when we met and we roomed together, and you're the best ever because <laughs> I know that's what he wants to hear, and I'm a good friend. <laughs> And so uh, maybe in a different conversation, if we if I talked to somebody else, I probably wouldn't tell that person that. But just know in the back of my mind, like when I talk to him, that's what I'll say. Are you supposed to say that like with me listening or I don't think that that's how that goes. Is this your podcast? No, I, I think the podcast then ended like uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um no, anyways, like extra credit. Or- yeah, yeah. I just want to talk to you now, man. I miss you. But uh, no, going uh, moving on, man. I, I appreciate that that subtle thing there. But um, obviously, being being a little pressed for time now, let's let's dive into the big stuff, dude. Um, so, 2016, your year starts off with a broken hand. We don't have to talk about that, dude. I know that was a dark time for you and me both. Um, but let's, let's, let's talk about, you know, the, the, how 2016 ended, obviously you, you, you got your big league freaking call, dude. And, and I mean, obviously a moment that you'll all, always remember. And that guy's kind of goes hand in hand with those moments of, you know, freshman year college world series or, or being drafted, hearing your name on the draft board and then, and then hearing your name saying, Hey dude, you're going to be in the big league. So obviously you, your experiences, dude, are just are crazy and I can't even imagine what this particular moment would be like, but just take us in, dude. Like, you know, if you can just kind of what was going through your head that, that day that that call came. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the day that you were scheduled to pitch was in Wrigley against the Cubs team that freaking won it all that year. Right. 2016. Yeah. Um, so kind of what, uh, yeah. what's, what's going through your head at this, at this moment in your life and your career, dude, dive in. Well, I, I, I will touch on the broken wrist deal, you know, because that year starting off, um, you know, we're in big league camp together and, you know, I ended up breaking my wrist in a collision in the outfield. But, you know, for for me, that was just the ultimate depleter, you know, all the confidence gone. Like I'm in big league camp, like, you know, I'm trying to make that impression and uh, that happens. And so just talk about losing all that confidence and all that joy and, and yeah. just an easy way for you to kind of go down the drain um, as far as just baseball in general and just life. Um, and I remember, um, you know, you were there as well. And so it was a great – what did you do? You had something going on. You had bone spurs. Yeah, yeah right? bro. I just got – I was – I mean, I was the same boat, bro. Like first big league camp, freaking had to get elbows. So yeah. we were we were in a pretty gloomy household, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think a couple other people that lived with us got hurt for something else. So it was a it was a bad household. But uh but anyways, just going off of that, it was a great time. 
um, for you and I to kind of have each other in that moment to where, um, you know, you're pretty upbeat, joyful guy. So you always help me kind of each day um, to see the positive and stuff. And I think um, as far as us growing um, in our faith uh, and just reading the Bible and different things like that, uh, we're able to kind of bounce off each other. So I'm, I'll be forever great, grateful for that. And just kind of like that kind of propelling me that year from starting off breaking my wrist and then ended up like making my big league debut and contributing in some type of way for the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And uh, so going to that, that day of that debut, you know, I halfway through this, I missed half the season in the minor leagues. You know, I go to Springfield, uh, Missouri, double A and, and I pitch a little bit and uh, I get about maybe 75, 80 innings in. And so at this point, um, we're about to hit August. I think we're a little bit into August and I get the call to go to Memphis. And so, uh, that's triple a, and uh, I make a start, um, had a pretty solid outing. And, uh, so I'm just trying to establish myself there, you know, new level, trying to, trying to fit in and just do my thing. And, uh, so the thought of being called up was not even in the realm of like, right. what was going on. It was just, it was just being called up to triple a, like big moment for me and just kind of heading into that building block to the ultimate goal of the big leagues. And, uh, uh, I remember just, uh, I was hanging out with Mason Katz and Carson Kelly. We were just out on the town, uh, in Louisiana, um, just the day after my start, uh, checking out some things. And then, uh, Mike Shield, our bench coach now with the St. Louis Cardinals, triple a coach then, um, called me and wanted to meet me in the lobby at the hotel and I told him you know I was I was out and I wasn't able to and so right there on the phone he told me and uh I mean talk about like the most absurd out of left field center field right field like just out of nowhere (laughs) all the fields of you know yeah all the fields I mean backfields any type of field you're thinking of Um, (laughs) and uh (laughs) and just like being blindsided but like obviously trying to like take all the emotions and like kind of stir them around and pick out the ones that like made sense of like, look, you just got called to the big leagues, like wrap your mind around this. So, you know, I thanked them and whatnot. And I got off the phone and I just started staring at like the seat and just trying to like, what just happened? Yeah. And uh, of course the two guys in the car are just, they could tell from the phone call and they're just like amped out of their mind. And I'm just, you know, stone cold, like in that, that draft day. And uh, so they, they end up going out and doing something, and I just sit in the car and I just start calling everybody, uh, all family and whatnot, sure. and uh, getting that out. And I was in the car for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and they had done like all the cool stuff <laughs> outside. I think they were at the Marucci factory, the baseball wood bat factory, and missed that whole tour and and whatnot. But I think if anything, oh, what a bummer! I think that this was a good time, good time. To sit. So uh, <laughs> uh, I get out of the car and they're finishing up, they're finishing up their tour, and I'm just like. And I'm just like, all right. So what y'all, what y'all bring me? And they got like hats and shirts and wood baths. And I'm like, y'all get me anything at all? And they're just like, ah, you know, we got, we got. They just gave us this. And I'm like, ah, okay. Um, they're like, we've like, you'll be all right. You know, you, you got some good news. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> You know, I was just really excited about the Mercy Factory, but not to take away from the moment. It was yeah, what a, a terrible funny, day like, to get called up to the big moment. leagues, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just a funny, quick moment of like, you know, it still didn't sink in yet that it happened. So it was just hard to believe it and then end up getting called up there. And, of course, it was at Wrigley Field, you know, not a more overwhelming place to pitch at for your debut. No kidding. In the division with the rival. And, uh was able to hold my own. I think I went four innings or so, a run or two, and, uh, you know, got out of there, and we ended up winning the game and uh, got that first one out of the way and was able to get back to my normal eating regimen because I went on, like, a three-day stretch where I couldn't eat anything, and it didn't matter, like, oh. how calm or chill I was. Like, I couldn't eat anything. Nothing would go down, smoothies, anything you could think of. And um, I just remember getting there on the my start day, and I just go to the trainer. I'm like, is there anything you can give me, like supplements of anything to fill my stomach? Because I really haven't eaten anything. 
and they're just like, oh, yeah, just drink a protein shake. And I'm just like, okay. Um, <laughs> in the back of my mind, I'm like thinking like, oh, they're going to get me on some highly sophisticated like system. Big league like, stuff. You know, I, maybe like, yeah, big league stuff. Like get some IV in me or something. Or I don't know what you would say. But he's like, yeah, protein shake. So I like, you know, chug that and it just made me feel worse. Like I thought I was going to throw up. Oh. And so I'm like, man, protein shake. Good call. And uh, – <laughs> But as soon as I stepped on the field, man, like none of that mattered. The adrenaline kicked in, um, you know, couldn't feel anything in my body. Just like fans yelling at me, telling me they suck. I suck. And uh, they suck. You know, just so much <laughs> just going on. Yeah. Just going on in my head. And it, it just, you no, know, at that moment, none, none of that sickness or anything was there. It just became like, all right, you know, contain yourself and go out and pitch. Um, dude, that's. Man, that's great. Um, dude, going back to that, that so that I, I said like earlier, I wrote that blog about kind of the, the main goal of, of being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, and I can't, I can't imagine being, making your debut at Wrigley, dude, in front of a sold out day game, windy crowd, like just everything kind of just all at once, dude. Obviously, I can't imagine that being like this most comfortable you've ever been. Um, so if you can do like, just talk about kind of like, what are those things? And I, and I know at this point in your career, you've had a lot of experiences like pitching in Japan, like uh, college world series. Obviously you you've had up to this date, a lot of experience with, with big moments, you know, in your baseball career. But how did, how did a, for, for one, like, how did this differentiate from all that? And then two, uh, kind of what was the mindset as far as what you tell yourself over and over again? Like, what is that routine of, you know, either try trying to keep it the same or, or just, you know, um, doing your, like, I'm going to get pissed thing. Like what is, you know, if you can yeah, just yeah. take us into it. Well, I think what I quickly realized, you know, after a couple of starts and this is just because it's the big leagues and it's what you watch growing up and just, there's so much emphasis you put into like what it's like to be in that position. And so, those overwhelming emotions and all that stuff you put on yourself um, is really the biggest thing. But after a couple starts, um, I started to really quickly realize like, this is just a really nice baseball field that could hold a lot of people in it. And it became like, this is the same exact game I've been playing my whole life. And like you said earlier, that's like 60 feet, six inches, like not, none of that stuff changes. And so every ballpark I started to go to um, was amazing for the first couple hours or maybe even until the start of the game. And then it became a point where, um, you know, it was just a, it was just a baseball field and you're just like, these guys have just, you know what I mean? It's, there's no TVs. You're just watching in front of you. And absolutely, so, bro. Uh, it just absolutely blew up my and um, to that point, I'm not trying to downplay any of it. It just became, I like, just trying to emphasize that, like, it doesn't matter if you're in a big league field, a minor league field, college, high school, whatever it may be. Like, y'all, everybody plays the same game. And then it's just about building yourself up on those, you know, those levels in order to get to the, the ultimate uh, goal of the big leagues and uh, to just, you know, the the pressures and the the weight you carry on yourself to try to get to that level um isn't needed because if you just go out there and compete and and just get better every time you get on the mound or in the field wherever you're playing um ultimately you'll get to where you need to be yeah dude like we talked about you know kind of earlier about how you know it's it's easy to do um as far as like overcomplicating the process right we talk about uh we talk about the art of pitching and we talk about like how easy it is to, to just everything in there, right? You can, you can just pinpoint every little detail in your mechanics or, or, or pitch sequencing or, or scouting, just like whatever it is, you can, there's an opportunity for you to get very detailed with it. But at the same time, there's an opportunity for you to keep it as simple as possible. And I think that's something that you do really well is like, yeah, you and I can have conversations, you know, in the outfield, about how detailed pitching can be and how like what you want to work on in your mechanics is, you know, and you're like me, you like to tinker a lot of things and see, you know, if you can find anything that, that works or whatever. But 
when it comes time, dude, when that umpire says play ball, like that's something I've always had just the most utmost respect about your game, dude, is like you're able to flip that switch of like, okay, everything out the window, like let's freaking compete, dude. And uh, I mean, I tell everyone, you know, not trying to like toot your horn, bro, but I tell everyone how, how much of a freaking fierce competitor you are. And I think that's something that, that separates you you know, from a lot of people. And I think there's a lot of, a lot to be said about that and individuals, how, how well they can compete, you know, cause obviously you being a starting pitcher, bro, you know, how you're not going to have your best stuff like every day. Um, you know, but, but what you can do is you can rely on that competitive fire each and every outing, you know, you can, you can always have that. Um, but yeah, dude, I think that, I think that's, yeah. there's so much truth, truth to be said. If you had anything to add, you can. No, I first off, I appreciate that, and um, it means a lot. And I think, you know, for me, um, I think a lot of that competitive, that fire, all that kind of stuff, just you know, for me, it's different. Everybody's different shapes and sizes and yeah. whatnot. And I was always, you know, the skinnier, you know, smaller guy, and uh, you know, none of that like fueled me to like you know oh i'm you know i'm a small guy i have to prove these bigger guys wrong it was none of that it was just right it was more it, it became more of like okay how many people can i prove wrong i mean i remember countless times and you know i want i mean i hope there's people out there that have gone through this and, and showing people you know showing people the truth but i would i would throw in showcases or different things just kind of middle school high school whatever it is and uh throw bullpens and radar guns and different things and and i was always a skinny you know slender guy and slender i was always throwing like slender wiry Uh, (laughs) but i was always uh, i was always throwing up there with the the big guys and velocity if not like matching them and and i remember a couple times where um you know, kids, random kids would just kind of be around and like, I get done throwing and they'd just be like, Oh, what'd you hit? And I would like say, say a number and they would just like laugh and then just look at me and be like, wait, no, what did you really throw? And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and just kind of would smirk and I just walk away and they would just sit there and just like, look at me like, you know, this is, this isn't believable. And, and there was just countless times like that. So there's this, I learned to just embrace and enjoy those, uh, those times. Uh, and, uh, it just became fun. It was like, even in during the games, like in the middle of different innings or even like the start of game, throwing slow on purpose in my warmups and allowing them to tie me up. And then like the first few pitches just rearing back and throwing as hard as I can and just like trying to blow their doors off. And like, they would always give me that same look of like, where did this come from? Or like, <laughs> and this, this different, like, I would always think that tactic worked. Like, let's slow my high, whole entire body down, arm down. Like, it literally looks like I'm trying to th- <laughs> throw slow, but then it always seemed to work. I would always get the same reaction, and I just, I just fed into it. It just became like that's where all that competitive, that's where that fire, all that comes from. Is just, um, there's just dif- different moments of just proving people wrong and. uh just channeling that into the right way, using like anger, whatever it may be, just channeling it in a positive way and going out there to compete. Yeah. So for our listeners that actually have never seen Luke pitch, um, and, and I'm not, I don't want to say anything right now that's going to get you like upset at me. So you go ahead and tell your like height and weight. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I would say around those times, I, uh, high school, I was, you know, pushing over six feet, but I was probably like, one one fifty ish you know, coming out one, of the pool uh, in, a, in a in a tux one four one forty five maybe and I just started gaining maybe five pounds every year so like I was in college at uh, you know one fifty five maybe and uh, I was over six over six feet so like I didn't look like a like a skinny pole or anything but I just eh. I definitely. For, <laughs> for, for your for the height there there definitely could have been more mass and and just you know more more to myself um and so that just kind of evolved and then this past year i was about 170 175 and you said you put on this weight off right? season i made a, yeah this off season it became like a serious goal where 
you know, I sat down with a nutritionist. I was like, I need to gain some weight and I need your help. And, you know, I had like this, just a really high volume uh, eating plan where I was just eating a ton three times a day, just three big meals and uh, going to the gym, working out hard. And I ended up gaining um, around 15 pounds. So I went wow. from, you know, I started off at like 170 uh, when the off season began to kind of couple pounds dropped after the season from 175 and I went to like 185 so now I'm sitting anywhere from one you know 82 to 185 ish just depending on you know what I want but you know that's the area and that was the goal for me this year was to put on some some pounds and uh you know even till this day um you know still having that slender body and and people are are saying um you know will he last is his durability strong enough just being a a smaller guy. And so I think this off season, I took that and just like, okay, I'm going to put on a little bit of weight and uh, hopefully it translates. And so I'm just testing the waters with it and see how it works. Yeah, dude. Cause like, I mean, I mean me personally, I know, I know how hard it is for you to gain weight. Like people who are listening and this kid is unreal, dude. He, he can eat probably like three milkshakes a day. Um, and, and lose weight like he's that's just it. he's that's like, hard. Hard. yeah he's like one of those people that that can that can do that so it's uh it's fairly impressive but going back to like uh your statue um it's funny dude so i i still remember like i have a vivid memory of this day when your first fall league in uh in 15 uh your first fall league outing and i'm in the bullpen with you and you know, you're getting warmed up and, and you know how everyone is, dude, when they, they don't see someone pitch, you know, the first thing they ask is like, Oh, Hey, how, how hard does this kid throw? Um, so when you go in, you know, everyone in the bullpen is like, Hey, like what's his stuff and blah, blah, blah. You know, and these are like the, the best of the best at the time, right? Fall is like a very, yeah. you know, talented group really of people. Sure. And, and it's funny, dude. So I'm like, guys, this kid, like kid can bring it, you know? And, uh, there's probably like eight to 10 of us in the pen at the time, maybe more. I don't know, but you know, I'm trying to tell everyone, you know, and, and Kiki was there, Kiki Effer was there and he's kind of attesting to it as well. Like, yeah, this, this kid can get up to the upper nineties, man. And everyone's like, no way, no way, whatever. And I just remember your, your first pitch, bro. Like freaking boom. And then everyone like turn around to, to do their look at the, the board. And it was like, I don't know. I think you hit like 98 that day. But it was just like one of those things, dude, like, oh, my gosh, this guy's freaking for real. Uh, I just wanted to tell that story real quick. Just to, Dude, I'm tooting your horn a lot today. Like, this is this is un- <laughs> This is the most you've ever done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hands I'll down. I'll be back for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe tomorrow we can talk and I can just give you crap the whole time. But, <laughs> That'd be um, great. So, segueing real quick. I know, like, this is the last thing. but And it sucks that it was going to be the last thing that I talked about. Uh, Cause it should have been the first really. Um, but uh, in, in 2016, you mentioned, you know, uh, us, us having time together uh, in, in a very difficult time in both of our careers, obviously not being able to, to do the one thing that we love to do. Right. And that's compete and play. But um, I will say, you know, to everyone that asks kind of the, the most influential year the, of my career and I, I will say like it was it was that year dude we're just spending time with you um and you mentioned you know obviously getting in the word and for those of you who are listening luke and i are both you know believers in christ and i think that year in particular and i can speak for myself bro like just just growing so much in the word um that year and and, and becoming real close to to jesus and especially in my relationship i know that's something that that helped me like uh i mean a tremendous amount dude um but if you can dude real quick just to just to wrap this up if you don't mind um uh obviously something big happened to you these last few months uh you got baptized dude so let's uh take us into that moment man and and, and i know you've already told me the story but I, I wouldn't mind hearing it again so just take us in um to that decision and, and then the actual act of of having you baptized yeah so you know you know, I agree with you and everything you said, you know, about that year and everything that was just so vital for just kind of the walk, our individual walks and just kind of like our relationships with each other. So um, right. I'm into that. But um, going into the baptism, um, there's a really cool article um, that I was able to you know, put out. Plug uh, it, dude. Plug it. How the, can we find it? So um, PAO, the increase. 
um, and just type in Luke Weaver baptism, and I'm sure it'll pull up on YouTube. Uh, the, not YouTube. I the uh, the on, increase uh, the is internet. a website, right? Yeah. 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 So the 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 increase. Um, they have YouTube videos, just various sayings. So that's where I'm going with that. But okay. this article, there's articles that, uh, um, that I've, you know, worked with, uh, lovely lady, uh, Becky York, who, who helps, you know, write these articles with us and, uh, just different athletes in, in general. And so it's a great way for us to get out our voice and, uh, for, you know, readers to just kind of understand, um, our walk and just different on different topics. And so there's a really cool article on the baptism there, but, uh, uh so that's at the increase. And like I said, type in baptism, Luke Weaver, but, uh, just kind of touching into that. Um, uh, it was just a, a decision that, uh, you know, and it says in the Bible, like just to, to really just show, um, everyone around you, like that you just truly believe in, in, in God. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a declaration where you just, you can't just hold it any longer. You just want the world to know. And so um, being baptized as a, you know, a very young child, you know, an, an infant, um, you know, a lot of times uh, parents, uh, believers will baptize their, their baby and whatnot. Right. But, uh, you know, as you grow older, um, that doesn't particularly mean that, you know, you're good. Um, but it's also the decision. You don't want to just don't feel like you have to do it. It's something you feel like you're called to do, sure. but I felt like I needed to do it for myself. And, uh, it's something that was weighing on me for a few years, just here and there, because, you know, with baseball and, and just life in general, things, obstacles get in your way and you just get sidetracked. So these, these little thoughts kind of absolutely come from time to time, but, uh, it became a thing with the, the, uh, this in, the increase they do a conference every year where uh, big leaguers and minor leaguers and coaches and chaplains come to this like four day conference and it's in various lo- locations um, and uh, we're just able to come to come together and learn more about uh, different charities and uh, learn more about the the Bible and uh, just come together for fellowship and etc. But um, the year before I was it was weighing on me to go do it. And, uh, we do a baptism at the pool and, um, uh, you know, I was, heart was beating out of my chest. Like really felt like I would need to do it. And, right. uh, kind of held back just a lot of different thoughts kind of hold me back. Like, is this the right time? Kind of questioning sure. and just doing the wrong thing in that moment. And, um, that kind of stuck in the back of my head. So this year, um, when we went back, it just kind of when we got there, that thought kind of popped back in my head. And, you know, I took that as a sign. I took that as a sign and um, just felt like, you know, called to do it. And uh, as we approached to it, you know, I just started feeling that same beat in my chest and uh, was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, my wife, Olivia, asked uh, asked me, you know, who, who's going to do it with you? Like, and I was like, well, I would love for you to be in the water. And uh, she's like, you know, what I think would be great for you to do it is um, – is Adam Wainwright. I think it'd be awesome for him to baptize you. And, and I, it sounded like an amazing idea because Adam's been such a great mentor to me. Um, uh, you know, strong, strong Christian, strong role model in general. A lot of things I look up to him on the baseball field. No doubt. Um, and just off the field with the charity work he's done and, uh, just his faith in general, there's a lot to learn from the man. And so it's been a, a blessing to be a, just a part of his life and the journey that I've been on so far. And, uh, so to have him there in the water was just an, an awesome thing. So yeah, man, it happened. And, uh, it's funny because Francis Chan was in the water too. He was the pastor speaking, um, at this conference. And for y'all who do not know him, he's one of the most, and I think Robbie can attest to this. He's one of the most, uh, you know, one of the biggest pastors in the world, um, definitely in the U S you know, yeah. uh, most renowned and, uh, and so, it was funny, you know, it, it, it didn't really happen this way, but it was almost like I was pushing one of the biggest pastors in the world to the side in order to allow, you know, my teammate, <laughs> my mentor to baptize me while he watched. So it was just a funny, like, I think me and Adam were talking about it a little later, just about that whole situation. And I was like, dang, that's a power move. <laughs> power but, move, uh, bro. It was, it was, it was funny, but no, I mean, it was one of the greatest, you know, moments there, especially with my walk. Um, 
and all I've gone through. And it was just a, it was a relief as well because of all that, that guilt and that tension I was putting on myself from not doing it in that moment. And uh, none of that was needed. It was just, you know, about patience and, and then just pulling the trigger. So um, that's kind of the story in a nutshell. Yeah, bro. That's, uh, that's ridiculous, man. I, and it sucks because I haven't, I haven't ever been to PAO, but for those of you listening that, that are an athlete, like I obviously I hear about it all the time, like how just an unreal experience that is, man. And, and it's, it's one of those things that I think, I, I mean, obviously I would love to do it. Um, but one of those things that, uh, will definitely allow you to grow from just what I've heard about it so much in, in your walk and, uh, not just in your walk, but, but the, the, the the brotherhood of it too, right? Like, I mean, everyone there, like, kinda, absolutely. There's, there's athletes there that you, you know, you know, and, but you don't really know them on a personal level. Um, and it's, it's just another outlet to get to know them better. And, and, uh, and yeah, dude, but, uh, shoot, dude. So we're at, we're at, uh, an hour 23. I'll, I'll finally, I'll finally cut you off. I apologize. Luke, uh, Luke told Anybody me. Anybody going to listen to it this long? Oh yeah, dude. Especially since I'm the host, has nothing to do with the guests. It's <laughs> the host. <laughs> but uh, I can so, how good you are. So I do have that website for those of you who are interested. It's theincrease.com backslash author black backslash ugh, Luke slash Weaver backslash. Um, and then I'll I'll put that up on uh, in the description of this podcast. Um, do you write those, by the way? Yes, yes and no. So those are um, good, bro. So talking with uh, with Becky, who um, you know, works for the organization, um, you know, we just kind of put together a, a plan there, and uh, you know, I yes, you know, I would say I, I would like to tell people I do. Um, those are my words, but you know, there might be a proofreader or something. Oh, dude, you use an editor. We won't get into that. You know, it's, 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 it's a well sound article, you uh, know, and we are just going to leave it at that. We'll leave it at well sound article. Um, okay, dude. Um, for those of you who are listening and don't follow Luke on Instagram, his Instagram is at dream weaver seven. Uh, we won't have to, we won't go into the details on how that came to fruition, but that's, uh, at D R E A M W E A V A seven. Um, Luke, it's been an absolute pleasure, bro. Um, I have been just so fortunate in, in my life getting, you know, just God putting, putting individuals in my life, man, that, that allow me to grow, um, you know, in my relationship with him and, and just as a human being, and you've been, you know, not to, not to toot your horn again, bro, but you've, you've been a a constant uh, role model in my life and I can't, can't say it enough. And I can't thank you enough for, for being who you are, but, um, appreciate your time on this podcast, dude. And, uh, well, what, well, I'm going to say is that, that I'm going to say that, uh, that horn's probably broken by now because it's tooting too much. But uh, nice. I never understood um, that 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 phrase but, though. What's but funny? But anyways, like... man. Yeah, I don't understand it too. But you just had a great moment, so I'm not going to crush it anymore. Um, I would Appreciate say, it. you know, you know, I appreciate the heck out of that, and uh, and uh, no, I I believe the same thing. Um, you know, I've there's definitely been a a lot. I don't know if there's been, a, there's been a lot I learned from. Just take that from a grain of salt. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's been an amazing journey for sure, man. And uh, and just your story in general, and, and these people that kind of keep track of what you're doing, and uh, kind of they stay tuned and listen to what you're putting out. It's uh, for those out there. I would just continue to do that because he's got some great stuff, and he's uh, he's a one in a lifetime human being for many reasons, uh, good and bad. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm excited to see what he continues to put out. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, thank you for having me, man. It's been a, it's been a definitely a ride for sure, but I'm just happy that I can, um, you know, put that out there and, uh, let the people hear it. Oh yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, like I said, appreciate you. Uh, tell, tell Olivia and Riggs, I said hello. And, uh, 
we'll uh we'll be in touch brother all right guys hope you enjoyed that podcast with luke weaver if you haven't already please subscribe the robbie rose show on itunes or soundcloud whichever you prefer enjoy the rest of your day until next time love y'all god bless peace out